RX Television on RXMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. Glad you can join us on this Wednesday, December 21st, the last show before Christmas on RXMuscle.com, your 30-minute weekly question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. If you want to join in, you can join in on the Muscle Central Forum on RxMuscle.com. If you're watching us live on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Like this episode, you can ask your question on the chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. Instagram, official underscore RxMuscle, our official Facebook page, or tweeting using hashtag AskDave. As we now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, I got an interesting question, I guess, from one of our local Long Island members, and I can't remember his name. But the question is, that you've been in Florida now for the better part of seven, eight weeks. How are you surviving without Taco Joe's? I'll tell you how. It's uh, the first day of winter today, in case those of you don't know. I know you, you prefaced it as the couple days before Christmas. It's actually uh, December 21st. It's the first day of winter, uh, which is the shortest day of the year. And guess what? I am in shorts and, t- and a t-shirt, and it is very warm outside. That is how I am doing without Taco Joe's. Because all you guys up there are freezing your butts off. And uh, to me, the weather's worth it. Johnny thinks he has staked out a, uh, a new Taco Joe's place. I have to try it out. I haven't tested it out yet. He said it's pretty close. Uh, but I've been living on Chinese food every day. That's, that's the God honest truth. Instead of me going to Taco Joe's every afternoon, I go to the Chinese place. They know my order. They know my order. I've been ordering the same thing about 30 days in a row now. And I go in there today and they're like, um, she's like, oh, I put brown sauce instead of white sauce on your food. Anything you I, so I took the I took the meal. So this was the first meal I had different in like 30 days because uh, just because they made a mistake at the restaurant. But other than that, super happy to be down here and uh, a lot of good energy here. I know a lot of people have been coming down here, uh, planning trips to come see me and stuff like that uh, for consultations and training and stuff like that. So it's all going good. Probably within hopefully by the February we'll have the new studios all set up. We're still in the makeshift little. Uh, uh, studio here, but we do have the permits have come through, so that's a good sign, and uh, hopefully all will be well within a month. Dave, you want to just give a quick reminder about next month about the um, the Guru course that you're giving out on the West Coast? Yeah, that's uh, going to be a great one. Um, I haven't really left the New York area for the Guru course in quite some time. Obviously, I was I did go to uh, Australia and give it, which was really really cool. Um, but this. January 14th, Saturday, uh, I will be at Hardcore Fitness in San Diego, California, uh, thanks to my good friend uh, Derek Farnsworth, who is co-sponsoring the the course with me. And I will be teaching my 10-hour class out there, which is going to go over everything you could possibly want to know for being a diet coach and just for general knowledge in terms of uh, your body goes, uh, supplements, uh, diet, off-season pre-contest, men, women, performance-enhancing drugs, steroids, uh, growth hormone, insulin, IGF-1, peptides, uh, detoxification, last week of contest prep, how to create real diets for people, all different you know, type populations of people, how to analyze a person when they don't make progress and, and get past that. These are all things that people just don't know, and there's a science behind it. I quantified it all. And I will give you guys the step-by-step instructions about how to do it. In addition, you get an 85-page manual. It's basically my playbook that basically gives you all my notes and all the protocols I've developed over the years at your beck and call. It's, it, it's such a great, it's a whole college education, four years in one day, essentially. And uh, guys, the seat, I just want to tell you, the seats are filling up fast. We only have, uh, I think we have like eight or nine seats left. And I, and I opened this to 20 people this year. So we have eight or nine seats left. Uh, for this class. So you got to sign up at DavePalumbo.com because once they're filled up, we just can't fit any people in the room anymore. Even if I wanted to jam. I don't like big classes, but even if I wanted to, there wouldn't be any room. So guys, don't wait. I'm telling you, I know a lot of guys out there have contacted me and said, we want to do it. We want to do it. Don't wait because if you run out and I can't fit you in there, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, so uh, Derek Farnsworth will be there. I actually invited Pete Ciccone. I got to talk to him a little later. He's calling me. He's going to be coming down. The big sexy Louis Uridel will be down there taking the course as well. So it's going to be a star-studded uh, afternoon over there. I'm looking forward to seeing all my West Coast people. And uh, don't forget, that's uh, January 14th, and you sign up at dayploma.com. Let's get to the questions. A reminder, the Arnold Classic question is, of course, the Arnold list being released between yesterday and today, the bodybuilding 
an open list released yesterday. Uh, Dave and I are actually going to do a video on that following this episode of Ask Dave. So we're going to hold off on the oral questions for now. We're going to do a full reaction video, uh, what Dave's thoughts are on the initial, initial lineup. Let's go to the questions. First on the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com. And we check in with is either Jinter or Ginter. Dave, help me out with answering this question. I'm struggling with finding the proper way to create female keto diet. I'm aware of the main principles behind keto. I managed to find some information about the diet. However, I'm still very lost in how keto diet should look like if built for an athletic female, which aims to come in better shape. Could you please give me an example of female's keto diet menu for a day, including pre and post training meals, Thank you in advance. I always like to say I don't like to do homework. That's kind of a homework assignment. So I'm going to give you a brief outline of what it is. For women, I usually do five meals per day. And that can include shakes or food meals. It doesn't matter. I try to hit about anywhere from 25 to 35 grams of protein per meal, depending on how big the girl is. Okay? Um, that could be anywhere from like four ounces to five ounces of protein, you know. If you're looking at food, it could be you know a protein shake with you know 25 to 35 grams of whey isolate. Um, I every meal is a protein and a fat source, and usually for women it's about 15 grams of fat per meal is, is usually pretty adequate. Um, that's a tablespoon of macadamia nut oil. That's a quarter cup of almonds or cashew nuts. That's you know like two whole eggs. Uh, it's it, it's a pretty simple formula. So you got to just put together the right combination. So like I usually break it down as a, as a lean protein meal. I usually do chicken or like a white fish or turkey combined with like some nuts. Um, as a fattier uh, protein meal, I might do like a salmon or swordfish or red meat meal with say um, maybe a, a salad or some green beans, a cup of green beans with like a tablespoon of olive oil on it. Usually I don't put, when I have a fattier protein source, I usually don't use nuts because nuts are high in calories. I usually just go for a straight oil or even like a half of an avocado. Um, in the morning, I'm an egg guy, so usually I give eggs. The guys usually get four to five whole eggs in the morning with a couple extra whites. The women usually get two whole eggs with a couple extra whites in there. You know, you could add some spinach, which is very low in carbs. You can add some uh, onions and make a little omelet out of it even. You know, grease the pan lightly with some macadamia nut oil. You know, you put five meals together like that, usually I'll do shakes. I'll do like, you know, 25 grams of whey isolate with like a tablespoon of all-natural peanut butter or, or almond butter. Blend that together. That's a meal. So I put five of those together. Usually, you know, every day of the week it's the same thing. And, I mean, you can switch the order around and the different types of food. But uh, it's five meals a day, five day, you know, seven days a week. And then one of those meals once a week is what I would call a cheat meal where you actually have some carbs to stimulate metabolism. Usually that works really well for most people trying to lose weight. What, you know, where it gets tricky sometimes is when people stop losing weight. And that's where coaching comes in. And that's where, you know, like a course like the Secrets to Coming a Diet Guru course comes in. Because then I, I can start explaining how to incorporate protein and vegetable days in. And, and how to manipulate that and when to decide when you should need to not have pro fat and when you do want to have fat. Because the great thing about fat is that you can store it in your body. Unlike protein. Protein has always got to be eaten. You can go a couple days without fat and still not be fat deprived. So, uh... These are all principles that I discuss in the course and that I discuss with my clients when I, when I do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And for those of you who can't afford coaching, there's a lot of people out there who just can't afford the, the fees. I understand that. Uh, I have a day, uh, something called the Dave Palumbo Experience. It's a new app where I have all my protocols and all my, um, you know, my, uh, I guess you could say, workouts and uh, advice. And all the videos and, and articles I've ever read or written, I should say, are in that one location. It's $29 a month and you have access to it unlimited. And I update it with exclusive video Q&As every week. And uh, my partner, Mark, puts up all the stuff I send him, workouts. And we're always putting up new stuff every single day. So it's a very dynamic uh, type of program in the sense that it's not just a static bunch of information. It changes all the time. So you guys might want to check that out as well. Let's go to IP1211. Dave, I've stacked with Test E, Trend E, and Clen, And I plan to run a test. 10 to 12 week cycle and then six weeks off. My question is, how would you do that to get the best out of it? Goes on to say that he's 26 years old, 84 kilograms, uh, amateur, but his training and diet are on point. Test E, Trent E, and Clen wants to do 10 to 12 week cycle and then six weeks off. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I like to do 200, 250 milligrams of testosterone a week, uh, excuse me, testosterone every other day with maybe 50 to 100 uh, milligrams of Tremblone every other day. That's a good cycle. I mean, you can do, start with 20 micrograms of Clenbuterol twice a day uh, to get, the, get that working. You can increase that every two to three weeks, you know, a little bit. Um, I think that's a, a great way to start. I think if you use that as your base of your, of your program without me getting into too much detail and boring everyone, or at least you know, giving away too much information because it's, uh, I don't really know anything about you, uh, I think that that's a good way to start. Go to Paul Sheriff. My question is regarding milk. I've recently uh, sourced raw milk straight from the cow rather than various chemicals that are added. It suits my stomach better causing no bloating um, and then he goes on to ask um, about the chemicals and things that they put uh, from a supermarket so I guess his question is about raw milk and the benefits of drinking raw milk from a cow it's funny you say that or ask that I just spoke about uh, told a story uh, on uh, the heavy muscle radio show which by the way I want to just mention now Johnny Styles is putting heavy muscle radio uh, up on our YouTube channel. So those of you who are too lazy to go to the iTunes or RSS feed and subscribe to the Heavy Muscle Radio Show, I do it all the time because it comes right to my phone. Um, you could watch it directly from rxmuscle.com too. For those of you too lazy to listen on the site or download it, you can go to our YouTube channel and listen to now Heavy Muscle Radio um, every week. It'll be up there. Johnny will be putting that up. But the question was uh, raw milk. And I mentioned a story to Chris Aceto where someone told me the same thing. If you drink raw milk, it's unpasteurized, unheated. The enzymes haven't been destroyed. It doesn't matter if you're lactose intolerant because in raw milk, the lactase enzymes are in there and they'll help digest the lactose and you're not going to have a problem. I, I got it delivered. I found someone who delivered, believe it or not, raw milk on a daily, weekly basis. Udder, I think it's called Udder Company or something like that or other or something or another, you know, for like cow udder. And I, I got this this thing of milk, and I don't know if you ever tasted raw milk, it has a very, uh, how you say it, wild animal smell to it. It smells like you're in a cow uh, stall. And uh, it really is legitimately, you can smell like it just came out of the cow. And I was, I, I can get past the smell, so I drank it, and I don't know if it was not good, spoiled or whatever, but I did get, I did poop my brains out for like the rest of the day. So uh, there is lactose in, in raw milk. It might be better for you because it's not pasteurized, but I don't know about that. So I, I tend to, to question that. <laughs> let's go to our youtube channel again if you're watching us live on youtube for the first time subscribe to this channel like this video once you subscribe you're not going to miss any of our show segments or updates let's go to guru hanza good friend of the show oh, wow. dave what do you think will be the best 2017 competition plan for justin compton well it, i see him his name in the arnold lineup and I think that's a good. I think that's a good strategy. I think he should be doing the Arnold now. His goal should be to win the Arnold. He's won some regional shows. He won that Arnold Asia, which I really wouldn't call a true Arnold because it was like a first year show. But I think that if, if Justin can win the Arnold USA, and I don't know if he's capable of that, but if he can, that would be really raise his stock up tremendously. He's going to have a tough time breaking that top six now with the Mr. Olympia. I think he can do it. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. It might take him three to four years. Um, but I think his first goal, and for, first and foremost goal, should be to, to, to win that Arnold Classic. And I think that's going to take him a couple of years. So I think he's making the right move, doing the Arnold now. I'm sure he'll go to Australia, hit that one as well in two weeks after that. And I know there's a, there's a show in, in between them in uh, New Zealand. I would hit all three of them, I would, Justin. And then I would shut it down for the rest of the season and just wait for the Olympia. Uh, obviously, at this point in his career, he can't be skipping the Olympia. He's got to show up every year. But the Arnold should be his number one priority, I believe. Let's go to Glurb Schnurb. Hi, Dave. What do you think about combining Testagel with injections? Um, it's kind of like, and I have given this analogy before for other things, it's kind of like throwing sand on the beach. Yeah, you got more sand on the beach, but can you really tell the difference? Um, a shot of testosterone is so much stronger than those gels that I don't think combining them is going to really amount to much more uh, with the gels. And the gels are a pain in the ass. You got to put them on every single day. If they rub against, you know, your girlfriend or your kid, you, you got to worry about it because the testosterone gets on them. So I would just stick with the injections. Way easier. Let's go to Flow State Fitness, Dave. Do you think there's any benefit to taking? Um 
correct me if I'm wrong, Proviron or Proviron Proviron at dose of 25 to 50 mg a day to increase free testosterone while on cycle. Yeah, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about the fact that Proviron can dislodge testosterone from the uh, the sex hormone binding globulins. These are these are uh, protein hormones that, that circulate in the bloodstream and, and inactivate steroids, basically. They grab up the steroids and inactivate them. Because let's face it, if you're pumping tons of steroids into your body, your body doesn't want to respond to all of them. It'll, it'll, it'll self-destruct, essentially. So the body deactivates most of it. And what we call the free testosterone is the, is the available hormone that's actually available to, be, to, to build and repair muscle. Theoretically... People say, back when I was competing, they said that proviron blocked estrogen receptors. Nowadays, they're saying that it, it actually frees up free testosterone, knocking the bound testosterone off the binding proteins and freeing it. Show me the research. I want to see it. I want to see the research they've done on this, because there is no research on humans, and I don't believe it. And I think the proviron is probably the, the biggest waste of a drug out there, to be honest with you. If women take it, they get a little harder because don't forget, women have no androgens in their body. And so proviron can harden them up, harden the muscles up a little bit by causing the muscles to store glycogen at a higher rate. But I don't think it does anything else. As a matter of fact, I think it interferes with the, uh, with the way other hormones work. I think, I think it's getting in the way of testosterone binding to the androgen receptors, not to the binding proteins. So I think the proviron is basically a nuisance. Because think about it, if it, will, if it gets in the way of the bind, if it binds the binding proteins and releases extra testosterone, why wouldn't it also interfere with the androgen receptor, you know, not allowing testosterone to get to the androgen receptor? Because you got all this stupid proviron that has no anabolic effect there. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the drug. We continue on our YouTube channel and check in with Alan Marashi. Dave, it seems like there is a new flavor of isolize that comes out each year is there a new and upcoming flavor in the works and any new species products for 2017 and he goes on to list micronized creatine and protein bars al marashi might be our uh, biggest supporter out there so i want to give him a shout out and a merry christmas to you and your family alan uh and all, thanks for all the support and for all the loyalty to our brand and to everything we do uh, having said that uh Probably for 2017, I won't be putting out a new isolized flavor. We have some really good flavors right now. I got, you know, there's nothing. I have a lot of people who haven't even tried some of the flavors. To me, people always ask me, Dave, what's your favorite flavor? I got news for you. Caramel Macchiata is my favorite flavor. And probably most of you out there never even tried the flavor. It's a creamy vanilla. I'm a vanilla guy. It's the creamiest vanilla you'll ever taste. It's so good that I can't believe that there's nothing in there, that there's no carbs in there. It, it, it blows my mind that our flavor guys were that good with the stuff. So I think people have to explore some of the other flavors like cinnamon donut, cookies and cream. These are flavors, you know, everyone else goes for the peanut butter and the chocolate flavors and, uh, and they don't really try some of these other more uh, interesting flavors that, that, that they don't know anything about. But I'm telling you, those caramel macchiata, knock your socks off. So we're, I'm not changing any flavors this year. Let people explore the ones they haven't. What we are doing is we are coming out with Creolize, which is going to be a super micronized creatine. You know, I'm a big believer in micronizing creatine, which means breaking it up into small granules so that you can better solubilize the stuff. Well, we figured out, we found a process where we actually can super micronize the creatine to making it so small that the stuff is almost airborne and it, it gets completely dissolved, almost 100% in solution. So that's going to be exciting. That'll come out probably in January. And then I'm working on a uh, neuro... Uh, a mind product, a uh, cognitive product called uh, Neuralize, which uh, is still in beta testing with Johnny Styles. You know, we have electrodes hooked up to his head every night, and we give him, we force feed him these pills, and we and we see how he responds and how his EEG shows up. And uh, when we finally get it right, and uh, we don't want to damage that brain because we need him to edit video, uh, when we finally get it right, we will release it hopefully in the second quarter uh, of uh, 2017. You're watching at StephenRxMuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Reminder, if you go on SpeciesNutrition.com right now, purchase $25 or more, uh, you get free nitrilized S Berry Blast, $25 after all discounts and before shipping right now on SpeciesNutrition.com. Dave, last week, of course, we had Iron Debate, and we talked about some of the most outrageous stories of 2016, and one of them was the guy aptly named Synthol Guy, 
Well, Synthol guy, Kenny O'Neill, actually <laughs> chimed in. He's a big fan of the show, big fan of yours in particular. Um, him and Paul Cartwright on our YouTube channel, I wanted to give him a shout-out. Have questions about EPO. So the question is this, and I'm going to take it from Kenny O'Neill, a.k.a. Synthol guy. What do you think of the use of EPO and transfusing fresh blood in bodybuilding or in any sport that demands a body to do things it normally cannot? Let's address bodybuilding first, because because bodybuilding is, is what we're, we're dealing with, or any physique category for that matter. Um, one of the side effects of taking anabolic steroids is that they, they cause your bone marrow to produce extra red blood cells, uh, which is good if you're an endurance athlete, because the more red blood cells you have, the more oxygen carrying capacity you have. And as a bodybuilder, they do increase vascularity a little bit. The problem with bodybuilding is what do we do you know, a couple days prior to a show? We dehydrate ourselves. We stop drinking, we take diuretics, and what does that do? That makes the blood get thicker. Now it's already thick because of the extra red blood cells. Now it's getting thicker. There's an uh, increased likelihood of clots. That's why um, you know, doctors don't like to see the hemoglobin, hematocrit, and red blood cell count get too high in, in, in people when they check their, your blood work, especially a bodybuilder. Now, if you go take EPO, which is a drug that directly stimulates the, the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells, uh, it's not a steroid, it's a protein hormone, you're basically making the situation worse. And there's no added performance or, or muscle building benefit of having more red blood cells. You already have too many with the steroids. So EPO is not a bodybuilding drug. As a matter of fact, it's a, it's a very dangerous drug for bodybuilders to take because of the fact that we do dehydrate ourselves. Same thing with blood doping. You don't want to put more blood into a body that already has too much and that dehydrates prior to a competition. Dangerous, deadly duo. Um, as far as endurance athletes who try to stay as hydrated as possible all the time and who are looking for that added edge in terms of endurance, EPO is great. It's, and it's better than steroids because steroids stay in your system a long time. EPO is in and out real quick, especially if you're being drug tested. It's a much easier drug to, to beat on a drug test. So a lot of these cyclists and these runners use it, uh, especially in the off season, uh, where they don't get tested quite as much. So um, bad drug for bodybuilders, good endurance drug. Stay on the YouTube channel. I'll take a couple of more from there before going to Instagram. Dave, there's a lot of uh, questions and literature right now in the bodybuilding world about hair loss, and this question is about that. John Seymour, Dave, your thoughts on hair transplants um, between, uh, I guess, what's called FUE and strip. I'm bald and cut it short, but I've been considering a hair transplant for some time now. Um, the hair graft technology today is really, really good. Um, you know, they do single and, and, and double hair, triple hair, you know, grafts. What they do is they basically cut a strip out of hair out of the back of your head, what they call the donor area. They tease out all the single things, and then they kind of plant it like a rug on your head. And I actually had it done. I've talked about this before. Back in the, the early 2000s, late, actually, I think it was late 90s, early 2000s, I had it done. And, you know, you only can put so much hair in your head because you only have so much donor hair. You don't, I wish I had more donor hair. Maybe someone else, well, Johnny has no hair either, but maybe you can lend me some hair because I need some more hair on my crown on my head. So I'm waiting for stem cells to start really regrowing new hair. But the hair transplants are good because they give you what's called a recessed hairline. They don't make it look artificial. They, don't, they can't rebuild your hairline you had when you were 18 because it's just not enough donor hair. But um, like I said, if you go to a reputable person, I used the guy Dr. Leonard, Robert Leonard in, in, in um, Rhode Island. He was uh, uh, referred to me, and, and I know a lot of people went to him. He had very, very uh, good results. He's way cheaper than the guys in New York City themselves. I know the Bosley Group is real good, but they're, uh, they're super expensive. And they're, they're all over the country now. I know Joe Weider was a big advocate of Bosley. I think he had the, some hair grafts done with them. Um, but once again, do your research. You know, the old days of hair plugs don't exist anymore. It's all, like I said, micro hair, uh, I guess you could say, implants. And, uh, and the recovery is pretty quick. It, you know, in, you're back in the gym in, in a week, so it's not, it's not a big downtime. Let's go to Wakar M, not Wakar F, like my brother said. You need to ask Dave, is it best for someone who's never taken steroids before to take Anavar while bulking or cutting, and can you make gains? Well, if you've never taken anabolic steroids as a man, and you take Anavar, you, you will make gains. You're not going to make huge gains. You're not going to gain 20 pounds of muscle, but you can gain 5, 7, 10 pounds for certain probably. You know, um, 
whether, you know, how much of that would be solid weight, it's impossible to tell. I don't know how hard you're going to train, how well trained your muscle is. You know, steroids work best on well-trained muscles. So people who, who've developed themselves naturally uh, quite, a, a, you know, to a, a large degree, when they take anabolics, they respond better than the people who haven't developed themselves already and just kind of starting from scratch. So um, I, I think anabol would work at about 30 milligrams per day for, for a man. Once again, you're not going to get the kind of you know, mass that you're probably in your mind thinking about. Uh, and once again, it might work a few times, and then it might not work as well anymore. Anavar usually was prescribed for women. Uh, but, you know, like an Anavar winstrel cycle for a man for a first cycle, is, is, I think, is a great duo. You know, you could take both orally. They're not very toxic, even though they are orals, because they're not that strong. And they don't have any side effects. They don't suppress testicular, excuse me, testicular function. Uh, they don't really cause fluid retention. They don't cause acne. So to me, it, it's a perfect first cycle. Jacob Rothenberg asks, if you accept power lifters for nutrition, coaching, and prep, he recently earned his elite classification in the sport and wants to work towards reaching the top level with a sound nutrition coach. Yeah, you know, I've been working with more and more power lifters and Olympic lifters lately because I, you know, these guys are figuring out our diets suck. And because our diets suck, we don't look good and we, we're not performing as well as we can. And, you know, the old days of, of being a fat, you know, big-bellied power lifter are kind of going by the wayside. It's kind of going the way, you know, remember when MMA first came out, the guys were real big and stocky like that. Now they're all, like, super lean, ripped, you know. Uh, they all eat really good diets because they understand that, that, that nutrition – is paramount to success and performance. So, um, yeah, I work with a lot of guys, and if he wants to, feel free to contact me. You know, my uh, email is huge285 at AOL.com. And like I said, I like to work with different populations of people because it kind of makes it a little more interesting. Let's go to Big Daddy Jenks. I hate this show more than Jay Cutler hates getting hate mail after Chicago football games. Dave, I know you said that you reject insulin as a muscle building hormone. However, do you think it has a place in a bodybuilder's program to go along with their pre-contest carb load to fill out? If so, what protocol do you recommend? Uh, I don't carb people up that heavily that they require insulin. Having said that, why would a person need insulin while they're carving up? I don't know, because your body produces its own insulin. So if you increase carbohydrate intake the last couple days before a show, whether it be 250 grams, 350, 455, 600 grams of carbs a day, no matter how many you eat, your body will produce enough insulin so that you can absorb those. And if it doesn't, that means you're a diabetic. And most of you out there are not diabetics. So there's no reason to be taking extra insulin. We all know that excess insulin causes fluid retention. Talk to Jason Poston about how difficult the time he has carving up because he has to try to figure out how much insulin his body needs. He only wishes that his body produced insulin so he wouldn't have to play those guessing games and all he'd have to do is eat his fucking food. Why do you guys make things complicated? Don't take insulin when carving up before a show. It's unnecessary. Let's go to Sam Gibson. Recently got blood work done. Everything was great except low GFR levels and high creatinine. What can I do to correct this? GFR was only 60. Yeah, the GFR, or glomerular filtration rate, is, is based on a mathematical formula. And the formula is based on the, your creatinine and BUN levels. So if one of those or both of those are elevated a little bit, it's going to lower your filtration rate in your kidneys. They don't measure your filtration rate. They're just kind of figuring it out based on what your uh, creatinine levels is. So that's not really a, a real number. I wouldn't get too concerned about that. However, high creatinine is not good because that means your kidneys are not filtering well or adequately enough and so what we need to do is we need to reduce inflammation around the kidneys we need to make sure your blood pressure is in check and we need to help detoxify them a little bit i sell a supplement um, i don't make it but i sell it on davepalumba.com called kidney stuff uh, i recommend everyone do at least six months six months at least 60 days of this every year each packet will last you 30 days at least do two of them a year some guys use it year round uh, your creatinine will go way down on this stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's a terrific formula. Uh, the reason I, I don't make my own is because I couldn't, the formula is so perfect that I didn't even want to screw it up and I love the name. I was actually just talking to the guy on the phone yesterday who, who owns the company because I had to order more because we, because we do sell a lot of that on the website, especially during detoxification time of year like it is now. 
And, uh, you know, I was telling him how the bodybuilders, you know, I don't know about the general population, says it, but bodybuilding population, a lot of the guys have high creatinine and BUN levels. And when I put them on kidney stuff, it goes down. And he was, he was really happy, you know, because it took him a long, it took him like six years to develop this product or something like that. So uh, he did a lot of research on this product. So I would, guys, I would check it out. Like I said, your health is super important. You don't want to have kidney failure. And if you want to continue to eat high protein meals, you got to make sure you detox those kidneys. Let's go to Adrian. It's either Lisi or Lessi. Dave, can you tell us a little bit about your preferred rep speed and the most effective speed for growth? Um, when I lift, back in the day especially, uh, my, I was always very slow and deliberate. Now, having said that, um, the negative portion of the movement, let's say we're doing a bench press. When I would bring the weight down, I would, I would descend very slowly, controlling the weight the whole time. Almost to the point where people would think I was stuck and they would come and they would try to spot me and I'd have to scream at them to get away from me. Um, on the way up, however, I was always way more explosive because that's where you're generating strength from. So you have to explode up, you have to slowly control the negative portion of the movement. Same thing with squats. When you're lowering yourself, you're controlling very slowly and deliberately. You pause at the bottom and then you explode out of the hole because that's the positive portion. That's when the muscles are contracting. Okay? And that's, that's how I, that was always my tempo. Slow on the negative, explosive on the, on, the, on the positive portion of the movement. And if you do that, you're going to see very good gains. Let's go to Luke Sheflinsky. Can you explain more about DHEA and 7-Keto? Um, DHEA itself is an adrenal androgen, meaning it's, a, it's a, a male hormone that's produced by the adrenal glands. Now, why would the adrenal glands need to produce male hormones when we have testicles? Well, because women don't have testicles. So... Our adrenal glands produce like a master type hormone known as DHEA. And in women, that DHEA can convert into androstenedione and that can convert into testosterone in their cells. And that's how they build muscle. Now, it's a very small amount, so they're not really getting any side effects from it, but they are, that's how they build muscle. And some women, there's some women that have a disease called polycystic uh, ovarian disease. And in those situations, and the, the size and percentage of the population have them, in that situation, it's an overproduction of that adrenal gland, and they see uh, higher androgen output. And those women tend to put muscle on much more easily. I know a couple of girls who had that, um, and they, they were naturally just very muscular. Um, but having said that, you know, DHA can be used, especially in older people over the age of 30 years old, as a hormone replacement type of thing, because as we get older, those levels go down. Before I had my dad on hormone replacement, I had him on DHEA for years, for like 15 years, I had him on 200 milligrams a day. Uh, women should take about 25 to 50 milligrams a day. I have a lot of guys contact me and say, you know, they, my girlfriend, my wife it doesn't have a sex drive. What should I do? I don't know what to do. Uh, I tell them, put them on 50 milligrams of DHEA a day. And that, that always works. It always works. And it's legally available. So you can go into a store and buy it. Seven keto DHEA is not really DHEA. It's, it's, a, it's a metabolite of it. And it's, it's used more for fat loss. Uh, I don't know how well it really works. You know, there was a lot of hype when it first came out. I don't really hear too many people talking about it, which is not usually a good sign. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't really have any, uh, that doesn't have any muscle building effects. That's just a fat burning metabolite. Take a couple of more questions. Let's go to Colton Britsy as happy holidays. Dave was wondering what your take on was on the actual lean gains made from a bodybuilder who goes about 30 to 40 pounds above stage weight off season in comparison to the ones that hover maybe 50 pounds above stage weight. What's your take on the extra weight being more of a benefit to lifting heavier or staying leaner, but not having as much insulation on the joints and ligaments to lift heavier in the gym? I was 319 pounds at my biggest and I was not fat. I was bloated, but I wasn't fat. I've seen guys at 315 pounds that were bags of garbage. They looked terrible and they had a lot of fat on them and it made it very difficult to get in shape contest time because they had to lose so much body fat. I would go on a contest diet, I would lose 25 pounds in two weeks of fluid and I would be in the eight to 80s and I'd be you know starting to look contest ready already. So you, there's a different look. It depends what it is. But weight on a scale is not as important as how the person looks. If I see some of my clients that I have on an off-season bulking cycle and a lot of you guys out there are probably watching this if I see you getting too out of shape, what do I tell you? I tell you, back off the carbs, or we, up the, we put some cardio in or something like that, because I don't want these guys getting sloppy. I want them to grow, but I don't want them getting sloppy. And sometimes a couple slip through the cracks on me because 
they actually hold the weight well and, and they're really holding a lot of body fat in there. So you don't want to get super, super fat in the off season. It will make it really difficult to get in shape. Um, at the same time, you don't want to stay too light when you're not gaining any weight because then you're not going to make any improvements. So there's a fine line between too much and too little. Let's go to the crank. Sid, ask Dave if we can fix gyno problems later after skipping PCT for d ball cycle. It's been like six months. I don't know what the question is. <laughs> What's the question? I guess he wants to know if he could fix gyno problems later on after having skipped PCT for d ball. I don't really know what that means. I, I'm assuming he means he has gynecomastia, which is breast uh, development for, for some reason. I don't know, he didn't do a PCT or he didn't take an estrogen blocker. Can it be fixed later? You can always fix uh, gynecomastia. You just go to your Dr. Blau up in White Plains, New York, and he'll cut it out of your chest. Um, <laughs> that's the most permanent solution for gyno. I got to tell you, when I got my gynecomastia removed, and that was back in 1991, it was the happiest day of my life, even though I had complications at the time. Because I was so happy, I never had to worry about another, another nodule growing in my chest. or I never had to worry about my, my nipples looking wool weird or like a girl's. That it was, to me, it was the best thing I ever did. The, the, best, the best overnight, you know, I guess you could say correction of something in my body was when I got my gyno removed. Let's go to D Roth P87. Dave, I hate this show so much, I'd rather eat a bag of, you could fill in the rest. Question, I threw my back out performing leg presses of all exercises and was stuck in bed for three days with debilitating pain having to take Norco. It has taken about a month for me to feel better, but still not 100%. Is the leg press a secret injury killer for the back? Uh, I don't know about that, but I, people who have back problems that don't really have a reason for it. Like I know people who have gotten into car accidents and now... Anytime they train their back, they're always in pain. But if you just have like a weird, like the heavier you start lifting, the more your back bothers you and stuff like that, that usually is a biomechanical problem. That means your feet aren't balanced properly or, or something biomechanically is not aligned properly. And usually that has to do with your feet. Uh, people who have flat feet or people who don't have good arches or people who lift heavy weights and their arches get flattened out, they'll get strains in their back and their knees and weird torquing in their hips sometimes. Uh, what I recommend you do is go to your chiropractor or go to your podiatrist, probably the podiatrist is better, and have them make you a pair of custom-made orthotics. They're custom inserts that go into your sneakers, into all the shoes. You wear it every single day, and I promise you, your back problem will go away. You've got to give it a month or two, but it will go away. Take one more question. This one from K. Simon. Dave, how do you feel about increasing sodium intake for low-moderate sodium diets, presuming that his kidney and heart function is normal. I've been drinking about a gallon of water with an additional gram of sodium daily and look and feel better and his blood pressure is down as well. Uh, I have a blood pressure issue, but it has nothing to do with sodium because I don't really retain any fluid. Uh, my blood pressure is actually pretty normal and pretty normal lately because I lost some weight, but um, ever since I got around the 200 pound mark. But the truth of the matter is that sodium is your friend. Drink eat as much of sodium as you want because your body will just flush the extra out. There's no reason unless you have a physiological problem or something wrong with you or your kidneys that you will not flush extra sodium out. When you restrict sodium and you only eat it every so often, that's when you get bloating issues because you're making yourself sensitive. How are you making yourself sensitive? I said this before, you're increasing the hormone aldosterone. When sodium levels are low in the body, the body releases aldosterone and every time you eat sodium after that, that aldosterone will will absorb that sodium and along with it a shitload of water and you will look bloated and you won't feel good. You'll get the puffiness around your eyes. If you eat sodium on a regular basis, aldosterone levels will be low. And when aldosterone levels are low, you don't retain sodium in water. So eat your salt, enjoy it, don't worry about it. That is going to do it for this episode of Ask Dave, the last one before Christmas. Dave, real quick, your plans for this upcoming Christmas and holiday season, if any. Um, I just want to say, I know, I, I'm looking at the schedule Johnny's pointing at. Tomorrow, well, today we have the Ask Dave, obviously. Tomorrow we have the seminar, the Guru Seminar from San Marino. I know you guys have seen part one and part two. Part three is going up. That's the Kevin Lavroni part where everyone... Uh, jumps on and attacks me, 
all the big stars, Flex Wheeler, uh, Sean Ray, everyone, and Dennis James, and uh, who else attacked me, Johnny? Uh, George didn't really attack me. George was just cheering from the side. But uh, everyone jumped on my, on my back about the Kevin LeVroy thing, and I, I thought I handled myself pretty well, given the fact that I had all these people against me, and no one spoke English in the whole room except for these idiots. But no, I, I, I respect them, and they said what was on their mind, and I gave them my, my real answer, as I always do. And I think you guys will love that. Uh, as far as um, Friday goes, I'm actually driving. I have to drive to Miami and pick up some snakes that are coming into Miami Airport and I, on Friday. So I'll be there. Uh, I know we'll probably have something to put up because I know Sid. Iron Rage. Oh, Iron Rage, right? John Romano and I did uh, did a, an Iron Rage the other day. That's going to go up on Friday. That's a good one. So you guys are going to want. I'm not going to even tell you what it's about. You're going to want to see that. And this weekend, I am not doing anything. To be honest with you, my uh, my wife and my son Logan and I. And our uh, and grandma, Amanda's mom, Denise, will probably go out to some Asian food. Like I, I, I love to do that on Christmas. I do like the Jews do because I am half Jewish after all. So um, I will probably go for some Asian food. I'm sure I don't know if Johnny Johnny might be around now. So Johnny might be joining us. You never know because I know his uh, wife Karina is still is not feeling so well. So uh, it's going to be a low key Christmas this year. Uh, next year I'm sure with Logan being almost two years old. We'll have to be, have, make it a little bit more of a festive Christmas with the tree and stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to be pretty low-key this weekend. Uh, like I said, I'll be hanging out with all, the, uh, all my Asian uh, friends uh, throughout the day. I'll probably hit the Asian Chinese takeout in the, in the afternoon, early morning. And then uh, later at night, I will go to the uh, Japanese uh, hibachi and sushi restaurant you know, for dinner. So that, that's my plan. Usually on Christmas, I go to the movies too. But... Um, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe Grandma will watch Logan and uh, Amanda and I will catch the new Star Wars flick, Rogue One. What are you well, doing, that's going to do for this episode what are you doing, of Sid? Ask Dave. Sid, I know On you don't... behalf of the RX Muscle you team, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you have planned over the course of the next week. Hope you have a lot of fun. Be safe. And, of course, lots and lots of gifts. For Johnny Styles, Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next week.